Howdy folks, and welcome back to Cold Waters with Commander Jingles McJingleberry, Commanding Officer of the USS Hyman G. Rickover. And we're pretty much carrying on from where we left off last time. We have a new mission. Those sneaky bloody Russians are sending a nuclear-powered cruise missile submarine south through the Norwegian Sea to attack the Atlantic convoys. Intel believes it may be a Charlie or Oscar class. And it's probably going to have a hunter-killer escort. So, our mission? Sink the cruise missile boat. No secondary objectives, weapons are free. Unfortunately, when I begin this mission, I'm several hundred miles to the north in the Greenland Sea and have to transit south to the suspect area in the Norwegian Sea. And that's when a submarine contact gets spotted over in the Barents, and I'm thinking, oh, maybe that's him heading in this direction, when suddenly, while at full speed, I get a contact in the Norwegian Sea, and I'm travelling at 26 knots at the time. So they probably already know I'm here. Oh, great. Okay, first things first, rig the boat for ultra quiet. And let's start turning. Once we drop below five knots, give our towed array a chance to see if there's anything out there. Right now I'm listening for launch transients. I want to hear things, well I don't want to, but <laughs> if it's happening, I'd like to hear well in advance things like torpedo tubes being flooded. But we have a contact designated Sierra 1. It's a terrible contact. I don't know the range. I just know there's something out there. So I'm going to snapshot a torpedo from tube 1 in its general direction. Second contact just popped up. Somebody is banging away with active sonar. Snapshot tube 2. Target Sierra 2. Get the torpedoes away. We're going to lose the wires. I don't really care about losing the wires. I don't even know the exact range to these two contacts. Right now I just want to get tubes 1 and 2 reloaded thinking about torpedo evasion even though I don't actually know that there are any torpedoes in the water coming in my direction but better safe than sorry so let's turn away from the threat and let's go to work at classifying these targets okay contact Sierra 1 pinging away on active sonar and that looks like a November we're gonna go ahead and call that one a November the solution's firming up, but it's still far from ideal. Now let's have a look at Contact Sierra 2. Now, I do make a misclassification here. It, it lines up looking like a Sierra, but it's not quite an exact match. I go ahead and call it a Sierra. It is not a Sierra. At this point, I'm thinking, this is not my mission. A November and a Sierra, neither of those are missile boats. There's the November. He's cavitating heavily. I don't know if he's aware that there is a torpedo in the water against him. The November was the Soviet Union's first nuclear-powered submarine. It was pretty noisy. He may not have actually heard the torpedoes. But, well, looking at what he's doing, he's going full bang, 26 knots, cavitating heavily and heading directly away from the torpedo track. So, yeah, he's probably heard the torpedo. <laughs> Although the course that he's on, that's going to put that torpedo right in his baffle. So it does acquire him and comes around to get him. He's not going to hear it. At this point, though, of course, I'm thinking, well, this isn't my mission, because the Sierra and the November, neither of them are missile boats. But that Sierra is, in fact, a Charlie. I just haven't identified and classified it properly yet. And a Charlie is a missile boat. So I may have completely, by accident, stumbled upon my actual mission here without realising it. Now, looking at the plot, the torpedo that I had designated for Contact Sierra 1 in November looks like it's not actually going active until after it's past the November. So the November does look like he's managed to successfully evade. Purely and simply because when I snapshotted those torpedoes, I did not have the correct range to the target. I was basically blind firing, but it's done the trick because... Well, nobody's firing torpedoes at me. They're still banging away on active zone. I'll try to pick me up. Now, the Sierra, which is not a Sierra and is actually a Charlie, there's a very good chance that one or more of those torpedoes are going to find him. But since I know for sure that I've missed the November, I'm just firing another torpedo now that I have a very, very good target solution on him at the November. Ah, there it is. I've just gotten news from the sonar team. Con sonar. Your Sierra is actually a Charlie. There it is. That is a cruise missile boat, and he is banging away on active sonar and cavitating heavily because he has just picked up the two torpedoes, one of which was designated for the November, but both of which are now heading for him. 
we've just switched back to watching the November for the moment. The Charlie, the fact that I've now got two torpedoes actually heading for the Charlie is not a bad thing because the Charlie had a titanium pressure hull. And it's not impossible for it to survive a torpedo hit. The November, on the other hand, if it takes one torpedo, it's done. And the char there it is. That's the Charlie. That could be my mission. Now, he's in shallow water, but the November looks like he's diving deep. And the November is doing a turn to starboard to attempt to get out of the seeker cone of the Mark 48 on his tail. And there's his sonar pulse. Now, I don't have the wires to any of these weapons. We're just going to reload torpedo tube 1. You'll notice, by the way, that I still, for some reason, have a harpoon loaded in tube 3. That was from the previous mission. I'd actually loaded that in anticipation of having to take out the Don-class submarine tender in the previous Cold Waters video. And it's still sitting there in the tube. <laughs> oh, yeah. We've got him. There goes his noisemaker. The torpedo has a good lock on the Charlie. That looks like it's going to be a hit. It has not fallen for the noisemaker. I don't see how he's going to avoid that. We momentarily lose sight of the Charlie, but that's just because the solution has degraded to the point where he no longer gets displayed, but we still had contact. The torpedo was still homing in. Straight and normal. Smacked him right amidships, and just the one torpedo took the Charlie out. So that could be mission complete right now. Of course, I'd still like to deal with his escort, the November. And the November is actually in shallow water as well. Well, that would explain the cavitation. And I'm pretty sure that that third torpedo is not going to find him. So, we're going to close in. Try to match his depth. Wait, is he... he's diving. Huh. Okay, we're just going to maintain our track. Let's see what he's doing. He's definitely going deep. I haven't heard his sonar for a while either. Has he turned it off? Oh nope, there it is. You see, here's the problem with banging away on active sonar. It gives you position away. And the reason why it gives you position away... Oh, hello. We'll come back to that in a moment. It looks like the torpedo might have actually acquired... Nope, the solution's degraded. But that doesn't mean the torpedo doesn't have him. You can see the torpedo's turned coarse and is homing in. And he's still going deeper and deeper and deeper. The thing about active sonar is the way it works is your sonar sends out a sound pulse and that travels through the water and as it travels through the water it attenuates and gets weaker and weaker and weaker. And then if it does strike a contact, that sonar pulse then has to travel all the way back to your receiver and as it does that, it gets weaker and weaker and weaker and weaker. And if the distance is great enough, it can become so weak that you don't actually receive the return pulse. So, your sonar has actually detected a target. But the sonar receiver on your boat can't pick up the return signal. So you don't actually plot that contact. But the contact knows that it's just been pinged by active sonar and it has the bearing, if not the range, to the sonar emitter. So he now knows that you're out there, but you don't know that he is. So it can be a bit of a double-edged sword. Now my solution on the November is degraded to the point where he's no longer being visually displayed, but I'm not entirely sure what the torpedo's doing. It could have lost him, it could be circling in an attempt to pick him up again, but have a look at his depth. He's down at a thousand feet. Still banging away on active. What's the torpedo doing? Remember, the November was the Soviet Union's very first nuclear-powered attack submarine. This is 1950s technology. There's his noisemaker. He is down here at a thousand feet. My torpedo can withstand those kind of pressures. But can he? There he is. He's cavitating again. Going to full speed. And he's still diving. The torpedo's coming around. I don't think it's going to get him. No, it looks like it's going to pass over the top. But, wow, it didn't matter. He imploded. He exceeded his test depth. The hull could not withstand the pressure. And he basically just crushed like a tin can. So, well, that's a successful kill. <laughs> I mean, I didn't kill him, but I made him kill himself. 
Right. Well, the torpedo's not going to find anything now, so... I'm pretty sure those were the only two boats out here. If there was anything else, I would probably have picked it up by now. Sonar conditions are pretty much perfect. It's very, very quiet out here. But just to make sure, um, we're going to come up to the surface and do a quick ESM sweep just to make sure there's nothing loitering around up there that I could also sink as a target of opportunity. Hey, you never know your luck. And, well, I've still got the harpoon loaded uh, from the previous encounter with the submarine tender. So, let's uh, take her up and see what we can see. At periscope depth, raise the ESM mast, and there is absolutely nothing out there. Well, it doesn't mean there's nothing out there, it means there's nothing out there emitting anything on the electromagnetic spectrum, certainly nothing that I'm detecting, so it does look like the area is clear. That looks like a successful mission. No vessels nearby, no weapons nearby, no aircraft nearby, no flooding. While we're up here, we may as well transmit our mission report over the satellite back to Comsub Lant. 1 Charlie 1, sunk 1 November, sunk mission complete. That should make the Admiral happy. Wait a minute, what's this? The Bronze Star? For me? Oh, you shouldn't have. Commander Jingles McJingleberry is cited for extraordinary heroism, not just heroism, extraordinary heroism, in action against enemies of the United States of America on the 4th of December 1984. Oh, Admiral, you shouldn't have. He probably doesn't need to know that I just completely accidentally blundered into my mission target without even realising they were there, but hey, you know, what he doesn't know won't hurt him. A successful mission is a successful mission. And that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'm off to Tankfest. Hopefully I'll see as many of you there as is humanly possible. Uh, and if I don't see you at Tankfest, don't worry, I will be coming back with lots and lots of video. Uh, in the meantime, enjoy your weekend, take care, and I'll catch you next time.